Lord Jesus. You know I've come a long, long way. Just my prayers to you stay since my blues away. My Lord Jesus, your sunlight surely good for my eyes. I was long a dreamer in the highway in the sky. My Jesus. The sunshine when the skies are gray. I love you so much, Jesus. Take me away, my dear. Oh, my Jesus, I love you, I love you. Oh, oh my Jesus, my Jesus. Oh, my Jesus, I love you. I love you. I know y'all do. Y'all remain standing. Wayne, I'm going to ask if you'd open us up in a word of prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity we have today to come here and worship you. Lord, I just pray that we would just empty out everything in our lives that it's not pleasing to you. And God, we just reach out to you today and receive what you have for us today. Ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, kiddos, y'all come on down. I got something in a box. Oh, Jared's got his box out. Oh, it's heavy, too. Man. Boy, look here. Look here what I got. Look, see that box? They're going to miss out if they don't come down here. Oh, I'm telling you, kiddos. I'm telling you. I got a big box here. I love when I get to open up boxes that come and they say things on them out on my front porch. It's always a surprise. And what I really like is when I open up my wife's boxes that I didn't know were coming. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, we bought that today. And then we bought that the next day. And then we bought that the next day. But aren't you surprised when you open up a box that you know there's, you don't know what's inside? I'm telling you, hey, Aaron, come over here. I want to, I'm not going to let them see, but I want to talk, man. Y'all want to know what's in this box? Oh, okay, well, hang on. It ain't going to get me. No, no, it's not, a, it's not a mongoose or anything like that. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, man. Boy, in this. What do you think? Wow. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Do y'all want to see what's in the box? What? You do? Well, wait, wait. I bet that tastes good. Don't eat oh. all of it. Well, don't you want all of it? Oh, man. It's sweet. I guarantee you that. It's really good. Hey, folks, y'all want to see what's in the box? Do y'all want to see what's in the box? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> you do? Well, let me tell you about some scripture, what God has for us that we're eager to his, read his word. Look, oh, I guess Miss Barbara's got it up there. Look, what it says in Revelation 1, 3, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. And I got one more verse for you too. Oh, this is a sweet one. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. How about that? All right. That's what God's Word is all about, folks. It's sweet. And I tell you what, whenever you get anticipating about what's in a box as much as you are this morning about His Word, 
you're going to read it more and more every day. Right, kiddos? So this morning, are y'all ready to see what's in the box? Are you ready to see what's in the box? Church, are you ready to see what's in the box? Oh, you're anticipating now, huh? All right. This morning, kiddos, every one of you are going to get a special treat. All right? Now, I want to see some happiness on your faces. You ready? And there's more to come after this. Look at there. You get a Bible. You get a Bible. You get a Bible. You get a Bible. Boy, I tell you, it tastes good, too. Church, doesn't it taste good? It's sweet, ain't it? When you get to read God's Word. Look at there. And I want to tell you what, folks. You're talking about a miracle. That's all Miss Elizabeth had, and that was all of them. And they all got one. But you know what, kiddos? Not only that, his word is so sweet and it's so true. I'm going to take the bubble wrap, the packing out. Everyone, you're going to get a candy cane. It has a scripture on it, a candy cane. Looky there. Looky there. I'm telling you what, that's because y'all were anticipating what was in the box. Look, I know you do. Church ain't going to get one. I don't have enough. But you take that. Y'all, just as God's word has all of these things to unfold for us in life, we should be in so much anticipation of what the scripture has that we get up every morning ready to read it. Amen. Let's teach these kids that same thing by the example of you opening your word, you reading it in front of them so they yes, can see it. Absolutely. Let's be the example for them. And as they read their word today when they come home, you read it with them. All right, let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you that your word is powerful. It's sweeter than honey. And thank you for giving it to us to give us guidance. It's our roadmap. It's our GPS. Thank you for these children. We love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I heard an old life on oh, Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory.
up me head I knew him Oh, and all my love is to him He punched me to the door He didn't cleanse the blood I heard about a mansion He is built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and that old redemption story in some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of it everyone's having a good morning this morning. Yeah, I want to hear all of y'all praising this morning because I know you know the words to this song. Now say that one was on me. I tried to blame it on Wayne, but there wasn't enough time. So... Now you all will get that song. Just give me, just be calm. You get that song. This is a different one. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's steel. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus.
are guilty yes. who would care that much about me let me tell you about my Jesus oh he makes a way when there ain't no way rises hey. up I 
want to see you. A holy, holy, holy. A holy, holy, holy. A holy, holy, holy. I want to see you.
short I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do But every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I
Praise the Lord this morning. He is worthy. Can we give him a hand clap of praise? Mm, thank you, Jesus. So this morning, y'all quiet. We're not in the library for heaven's sake. So this morning, I have one I want to share with you. Um, the fruit of the Spirit. And we living in a culture that we wonder why all the chaos. I mean, it's, it's depressing to even turn on the news, ain't it? And it's even more depressing to watch the shows on TV because there's no moral character anymore. Goes further and further down a dead end road. That's chaos to me. That's turmoil. And why do we watch a world live in such chaos and turmoil? I want to share this with you. It's why churches even go through chaos and turmoil within when they leave God out. And I want to tell you, you can leave God out or you can bring God in. But it all depends on you. The scripture says, choose you this day who you'll serve. And it's time for us as individuals to, to start choosing who we're going to serve. Because this world ain't getting no better. Let's face it. It is getting no better. We are having the greatest attack on our young people ever in the history of America. It's an all-out war for your children. Why is it a war? And it's a war without guns. It is a war for the soul of your children. Some politicians even in the political spectrum hates to hear us say this, that it's not about Republican, Democrat anymore. It's about good and evil. 100% unequivocal, it is good versus evil. But are we going to rise up in the goodness of God and proclaim his righteousness to a generation? That's a challenge of the day. The challenge of our time is to rise up in the goodness of God and proclaim his righteousness to a generation. How do we endure what's going on in this world? After all, it is a very depressing moment if you allow that to be. I don't want to paint a picture to you today of gloom and doom, however... That is all we can look around in the world today and see. We see the assault against Israel, the assault of, to, uh, from, from, the, from the sea to sea, kill the Jews. Y'all are quiet. But what God is calling us to do is not hear the background noise. Amen? That's background noise. It's babble. Because again, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We as followers of Christ must have an alternative to offer the world around us today. And that's what you have as a believer is an alternative. And not just a, an alternative, but the greatest thing on the planet the greatest thing ever happened in the heart of a man, you as a believer in Jesus Christ have an awesome alternative to offer this world today. Why? The world is in such chaos and turmoil that we as followers of Christ must see the need to produce the fruit of his spirit in our own lives to this world because of the chaos and turmoil that's destroying this generation. Luke 13, 6 through 9. Luke 13, 6 through 9, the scripture says this. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years... I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. 
Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. What we as the church think, and I want to say that, what we think is right, we're missing out on the blessings of God when we don't walk in the fullness of God. <laughs> we can think, well, man, I'm, I'm good. I ain't part of that. It ain't bothering me. Let me tell you something, friend. It's coming to your door. Will you stand up? I'm not going to wait till they've beaten my door down. It's time now. Amen? A fig tree that don't bear figs or an apple tree that don't bear apples or an orange tree that don't bear orange. What do you call that? It's just a tree. It's kind of like a boomerang. You know, Australians got that big old stick made like a, made that way. You know what I mean? And you throw that thing and it comes back to you. Good luck with that. You know what you call a boomerang that don't work? A stick. That's right. That's right. What do you call a Christian that ain't effective? Hmm. They could be a lot of things. But what God has put inside each and every one of us is not, it, it works when we walk in it. And to walk in Jesus, to walk with him, is to be in step like a military term. To walk in step with him. To be in step with Jesus. Not just get saved and go on a way that you want to go. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. But when we walk in step with Jesus, my friend, it's not about you anymore. It's not about your ways anymore. It's not about the unrighteous life you've lived before. It's a brand new day and we turn and change begins to happen in our life. And your friends give you this look. Huh. What's up with him? They said that about me when I got saved in the, in the mountains. Them old mountain boys said, oh, Frankie's just going through a spell. I'm still going through a spell. And it's getting better and better. And let me tell you what happened. Because I was going through that spell, it took three years. I mean, I, friendships wasn't friendships anymore because we didn't think the same. We didn't act the same. Didn't mean I quit and didn't walk with them no more. But they didn't want to be around me. But three years later, I'm sitting at my table one night about 9.30 and boom, 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 boom. And when I open the door, he falls on my neck weeping. I need Jesus. What if we never allow God to live through us? What if we never let the Spirit of God direct us? What if we don't walk in step with Jesus? What if we don't allow him to be the fullness in each of us, his church? What if we don't allow him to do that? What happens? Look at your culture. And that's what happens. Look at our culture. That's what happens. The church used to be involved in every realm every aspect of life in america we was involved in the political system oh don't talk politics in church a separation of church and state let me tell you something separation of church and state was written that the that the government was not to reach inside the church and start dictating to the church how to live that's the separation of church and state. Not that the church is to go get inside its little four walls and shut its mouth. You are the light of the world. You are the salt. And it is time that God's people begin to walk in step with him and walk and let God direct us and impact a generation that's soul is in jeopardy. And it's time for us to move in Jesus. If the evangelical movement don't begin to operate in his fullness, 
And in the fullness of God, God will use something that is foreign to many evangelicals. I want y'all to get this right here that I'm about to say to you this morning. God is going to use something that is foreign to evangelicals. I'm going to say that again. God is going to use something that is foreign to many evangelicals to change the lives of many that are being destroyed by this chaotic movement in the world. And that foreign stu- substance is the fruit of his spirit. That is sad to say that today. But many evangelicals, the fruit of the spirit is foreign to them. We got church people that'll look back and go, mm, that ain't God. When somebody's weeping and crying and pouring their heart out, mm, Let me tell you something, friend. God is a spirit. John 4, 24. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is calling us to a place of denying ourselves. Jesus said, anyone that comes after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Follow me. Walk in step with. When we was in basic training and we, we were marching and you had them guys that couldn't know left from right, and when they'd say, right face, and then they go, Psst. And then they're looking, down. one of these things don't belong here. Where? Oh, boy, let me turn around. And when we would march, our drill instructor would tell us, man in front of you marching out of step, you kick his feet out from under him. He falls down a few times, he'll learn he's left from his right. You kick his feet out from under. Walk in step with. Let me tell you something. The reason the church is not making more of an impact in the chaotic culture that's going on today, we've been out of step long enough. God is calling us to a place to walk in his fullness so that his fruit is seen in our life and not our self-righteous ways. Amen? Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16, I say them, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these two are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, self, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and the like, which means the list goes on. And it starts being more chaotic, drug abuse, sexual immorality, rampant sexual immorality, drugs, drug addiction, Pornography. Let me tell you something. When we allow that stuff into our life and nobody else can see it, I'm going to hide that. I've shared this with y'all before. If you have to hide it, there's something wrong with it. That ought to be your first indicator to you because these things are evident. They're evident in our life, and we, we're, we're drawn away by these desires fleshly desires. Why is that? Don't you just hate it? When you're enticed by something other than the Spirit of God? Why is that? Because this flesh has no part with God. It's not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's not going to it has no inheritance with the kingdom. It is going to return to dust. So it is the mind and the flesh and what I can see and get my hands on, that's, they create lustful desires because, oh, that'd be, oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be fun. Remember in high school, young men, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you're in high school and your buddies tell you something, that'd be a good idea. Dare you to take that possum in there and turn it loose in the school. I did that. I got a five-day vacation. It was a good idea at the time because it was funny. But it wasn't funny when my mama found out.
and there's nobody to blame it on. Well, well he, he, he did it. You see what happens, and this, this happens in our, in our walk with Jesus, things that get us out of step with him, is because we, to die, Paul said, we die daily to ourselves. Daily to them desires that draw us away from godly character. I'm going to get ahead of myself right here, but I'm going to share this with you, and I may say it many times this morning. The Spirit of God produces godly character. The Spirit of God produces godly character. And when our character ain't representing God, then whose character is it? It's my character, and it's evident. The Scripture says right here in this passage of Scripture that it's evident. But if you're led by the Spirit in verse 18, you're not under. What is the law? That's where we try to justify, well, I'm doing this right. I've done this. I've got a checklist Christianity. Checklist Christianity don't produce the fruit of God in your life. Checklist Christianity will make you just like everybody else in the world. Remember, friendship with the world is enmity with God. What is enmity? It means strongly opposed to what God has for us. So we have to learn to walk in step and let the Spirit of God create the righteousness of God inside of each and every one of us. But I want you to jump down here with me. In verse 21, uh, let, me, let me go to, let, yeah, let's, 21. Envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I said a while ago, which means the list goes on. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Will not. You know, we hear that term, let's fake it till we make it. When we fake it till we make it, we're fooling ourselves. I'm going to say that again. When we fake it till we make it, we're fooling ourselves. You ain't fooling nobody else. You sure ain't got God fooled. Because he sees everything that we want to keep hidden and not honor him in our life. God sees every bit of it, and he is... That, that, that's why we have to hide it. Conviction will either make you turn away from it, conviction will make you turn away from it, or hide it. And when we turn away from it, it produces... Mm, I'm going to get way ahead of myself. Here we go. But the fruit of the Spirit, and when we turn away from things in our life, right here's what happens. But the fruit of the Spirit, everybody say fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. What is he saying? I don't have to justify myself because there's an internal peace that comes from the throne room of God because I'm choosing to march in step with the King of King and Lord of Lords and I've made him King and Lord over my life. I'm not my own anymore. I am bought with a price. I am not my own anymore and I'm going to walk in step with him because I want to give him glory because of what he's done in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Works of the flesh. Let's back up here a minute. We're going to jump back and forth here. Works are something you do. This is what I want you to get today. And I just pray in the name of Jesus that this will settle in our heart. And convict us to the point as individuals that we begin to march in step with the Father. I was sharing with the men this morning when we was probably five or five weeks into our basic training as a young man. He did not want to be in the military. He was thinking every way. He was lazy. He wouldn't do things. He, he didn't, didn't do his clothes right. Didn't do his bunk right. Just, just a host of things that was overshadowing him. And it kept the drill sergeants riding him like a broke mule. And he wanted out. He'd tell them, I want out. I want out. You ain't getting out. 
You're going to stay in here. You're going to learn to be a man. We don't have a military like that today, let me tell you. It is so changed. So he decided, I want out of here so bad, I'm going to wet my bed. And boy, that caused ridicule. And then the next night, he wet the bed again. So they stripped him of his blouse. His says U.S. Army had his name on. Take take that away from you. You want out? You're gonna get out. But you'll get out when we got time to deal with you. We got we got 50 men here that want to make it. You want out? You'll get out when we got time. When I graduated AIT, he was still going around in his camouflage pants and a t-shirt, which means he is a no-go. I'm a, hello, you're marked. He's a no-go, and he's just hanging out there on the military base until they decide and get ready to do whatever it takes to get him out of there. There's a tree bearing no fruit. Ain't a soldier. Ain't a soldier because you put the uniform on. You hear me? We're not a Christian because we've done our checklist. We're a child of the king because we follow the king. Because we march in step with the king. Because we seek the king's approval in everything we do in everyday life. Do you have flaws and, uh, flaws and failures through your daily activity? I sure do. But praise God we can recognize them. When we refuse to recognize them, it's the works of the flesh. I'm going to say this again. Works are something that you do. Wetting the bed just so you can get out of the military, you did it. It's not the army way. It's your way. But you did it. Now you're going to sit over here and what you did. Hmm. Works are something that you do, motivated by your own flesh. But the Spirit of God helps us to respond as He urges us. The Spirit of God directs us as He urges us. John 7, holds your place in Romans. We're going to be coming back. John 7, 38 and 39 says this. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Let me tell you something. This ain't an option to you as a believer. It's the fruit of the Spirit that begins to live in us that produces the river of living water. Would you rather... In the, in the summertime when it's 105 degrees, hang out by a pond or the river? I'm going to the river. Why? Because it's fresh water all the time. It ain't what it was yesterday. I'm, that is amazing to me that the Mississippi River, every time I cross it, I think of this, how that Mississippi River has been flowing, and I've been crossing that thing for years. And the water that I'm looking at today, I've never seen it before. Never. And what God is wanting to produce in your life is things that you can't understand about you because it's not you anymore. It's the Spirit of God that lives inside of you. And greater things, he said in Mark chapter 16, greater things you will do than I have done because of the Spirit of God that lives inside of you. He said in verse 39, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those who believe in him would receive. You see what happens? When I believe in him, I receive it. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. But today, my friend, Jesus has been glorified, and the Spirit of God wants to possess mine and your soul. And create in us the life of righteousness for his name's sake. Now we'll go back over to Romans. The sources are different. Flesh and spirit. They're both different. And, out, and their outcome are different. But the fruit of the spirit, the spirit is also tangible. People know when you have the spirit of God about you. Took three years for the old boy to come knock on my door and say, when I opened it, the first words out of his mouth, I need Jesus. Wasn't, hey, Frankie, how you doing? I need Jesus.
you can possess the Spirit of God from His throne room because there's something inside of you that is desirable to others. And others want what they want to gather by the river. The river, why? Because it's good and cool. Man, just stick your feet off in it. I ain't got to go get all the way in that river. Just put your feet in that good, cool water. It makes 105 be tolerable. Amen? In the chaotic world that we are, that, that this, that is trying to swallow this generation, when the people of God begin to let the Spirit of God produce in our hearts what is bringing glory and honor to Him, I'm going to tell you what, they will flock to you. If you go read about the New Testament church in Acts, 3,000 was added to the church daily. And the population of this world today way supersedes what it did back in that time. But the Spirit of God ain't flowing in the church like it needs to, like it was back then. The, the Spirit of God don't need to be foreign to the people of God. We need to be surrendered to him. Fruit always produces the character of the tree. An orange tree, if you see an orange hanging on it, did you identify it because of the tree or because of the fruit? We made Jesus a fashion statement in America. We wear it on our T-shirts. But is there enough evidence that people could say, man, he must know, he must be a believer. We don't need to put it on a T-shirt. We need to let it be birthed in our heart. Because the, mm. go back to verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against there, such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not be become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. We need the Spirit of God to manifest itself in this culture today. That's all we need to do. It's easy. And the way we do that is deny ourselves. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is the life source. And it is the character of Jesus. As we walk in step with Him, His character is produced in us. Your flesh will destroy His fruit. Why? Because it's your flesh, your desires. Again, Works of the flesh is something you do motivated by your flesh, by your flesh, by your desires. It's not God's desires. God would give us the desires of our heart. I see people go, man, oh, God bless me with that Dodge truck. That's, that's a desire. That's a desire. I didn't say a desire of the heart. That's a desire. I want that truck. Let me tell you something that comes to that truck. Payments, insurance, gas, tires. And problems. Hello. But God will give you the desires of your heart. That my heart is hungry for him. That I need more of him. Is that where we are today? Are we hungry for what God has for us? Friend, I got to tell you. The Lord is calling the church, he's calling the people of America to a place that's producing the character of God. James 3, James 3, verse 12. Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olives, or a, grape, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring can yield both salt water and fresh watch verse 13 who is wise and understanding among you let him show by good conduct his works that are done in the meekness of wisdom but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart do not boast 
and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Wow. How long ago was this written? And it is doing nothing but pointing out the chaotic culture of today. But he goes on here in verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. I'm turning around. I'm walking in step with. I've learned my left from my right. Full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, not peacekeepers. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, not peacekeepers. It is time for God's people to realize, recognize what's going on outside these four walls and in this world every day. And when we turn on the news and we don't like it, listen, I just turn it off. But it don't change the fact that this world is in chaos and in turmoil. And what God has given me is awesome. And I have an alternative to offer this world because his name is Jesus. It ain't about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. And all we got to do, and we can't lift Jesus any higher than he already is. He is exalted. He is at the right hand of the Father. But we can exalt him in our life by denying ourselves and allowing the fruit of God to manifest itself in us because we are blood-bought saints of the living God. He's coming back for a church that he purchased with his life's blood and one that is willing to surrender to his authority. I'll never forget the day when I went in the military. I, 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 I was an old country boy, born and raised in Punkin Town, South Carolina, never been away from home. And I'm, I'm going to, I've uh, never been on an airplane. I'm flying to Fort Bliss, Texas, El Paso. And, and I, I, I'm, I, I asked my recruiter, I said, how am I going to know where to go when I get there? He said, oh, it's like he forgot to tell me this part. He said, oh, don't you worry about that. He said, this brown envelope, I'll have this the, the day you depart. I'll meet you at the airport. I'll hand you this brown envelope. You carry this brown envelope, and when you get in the airport in Fort Bliss, Texas, don't you worry about it. They'll find you. I'll never forget walking down that hallway, looking at the wall. They had all this World War II stuff in the airport there, and airplanes and stuff from Vietnam or just some warp. And I'm reading, looking at that stuff on the wall, and I hear this man screaming, Hey, you maggot! And I, I look down that hall, and I'm thinking, man, that's disrespectful. <laughs> and I'm turned back, and I'm looking right here. Make it, you better look at me when I'm talking to you. You with the brown envelope. What? And here he come, and he snatches that thing out of my hand. He says, you follow me. Get your, follow me and open your ears. We walk down here, and he's snatching all this stuff out of the deal and I'm nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof and he's jerking all this paperwork and he hands me that envelope back and he says now you go out there and get in that white limousine there's a white limousine right out these doors you go get in that it'll take you to base and now, and good luck to you is all I can tell you so I walk out there and there's about 15 other guys standing out there from all over the place and And I get in that car, and there's a Hispanic guy driving her car, got the dice hanging from the rearview mirror. And this limousine, ain't got no windows in it. Okay, so you thinking, a white limousine? Why get to ride in a limousine? I thought kind of hit my mind, but when I get out there, this is a jalopy. Okay? And, and we get in this car. And there's some boys from West Virginia. We kind of establish where everybody's from. And... And there's like six seats in that car. And this Hispanic guy, he's speaking this Spanish. He put all our luggage on top of the car, strapped our luggage to the top of the car. And them boys from Virginia, as about four of them come together, and they thinking it's all funny, so they get to swearing at our driver because he don't speak English. And they swearing at him, making fun of him, making fun of his driving, and he's playing that 
Hispanic music going down the road, beating on the steering wheel, singing, and they swearing at him and thinking they're being cool. You know what the definition of cool is? Not so hot. Okay? So they're beating on the steering wheel, he's riding down the road, singing his music. And when we get over there to that base, he gets out of the car and goes to speak in English. <laughs> and gets to saying back to them boys from West Virginia all the things that they've said to him coming over to the base. And he unstraps our luggage and shoves it off on the ground. He ain't picking that luggage up and setting it down. He shoves it off on the ground. And he's swearing like them boys from West Virginia was swearing at him coming over there. And he says, now, we're going to see who laughing now. <laughs> and about that time, we're just standing out there, and I'm, I'm in Fort Bliss, Texas. I'm standing over there, and here they come running out. There was about 18 drill sergeants come running out at one time. And get off the grass. Get off the grass. And I am like, what? Who is on the grass? They ain't a blade of grass there. We're in Fort Bliss, Texas. Ain't a blade of grass nowhere. And I'm thinking, man, and they're screaming and yelling, you better be off the grass when I get over there. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, whoever's on the grass, get off of it. Guess who was on the grass? <laughs> Me. I'm standing on rocks over there just right off the sidewalk. And that was the grass. And I had to get out on my knees and turn the, them rocks over and apologize to them because I'd bruised the top side. Why, what is the point of all of that, you may be thinking? Why do we go through the hard things in this life? You may be in a place right now that you're thinking, man, I just, if, if you just knew where I was, you wouldn't be telling me I need to trust God. If you just knew what was going on in my life, if you just knew how hard it was, every bit of that is done so God can produce his righteousness in you. Stop thinking you can't call on him. Stop thinking he don't care about you because God is wanting to produce his righteousness in you. Right where you are, God is not going to leave you in your circumstances. He's got you going right through what you're going through. I don't care how hard it is. He's got you going through every bit of that so he can produce his righteousness in you if you will trust him and turn to him and walk in step with him. Y'all stand with me. Come on, Wayne. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. As Wayne comes, I got one, two other scripture I want to share with you. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. I said I'm going to share it with you, and I'm going to. Romans 8, verse 9, says this, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. You see how important it is that we have the Spirit of God, the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians 2 and 20. Paul wrote this one. I have been crucified. Let me back up to verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. If anybody understood about living about the law, Paul did. Because he walked around killing Christians because he was trying to live by the law. But then on the road to Damascus, he met the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he was forever changed. And he said in verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I don't know what you're going through, but I know he cares for you. Your life may be as chaotic and have as much turmoil as this world does. But I want to remind you what the King of King and Lord of Lords said. Be of good cheer because I've overcome this world. Whatever you're going through today, I want to challenge you right now all over this place. Wherever you are, what you're suffering through, what you're going through, I don't understand. I need, I need some peace. Turn to the Master.
and listen to him say to you, peace, be still. And turn to God in a world that needs some hope and let God restore your hope and use you for the hope of others. Come on. Father, today we love you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory. And I ask you for strength in this place for your kingdom's sake. And God, I pray that the fruit of your righteousness, the fruit of your spirit, would be produced in each and every one of us for your kingdom's sake. Lord, build our hearts, strengthen our hearts. We live in a world that there's so much noise going on. It's background noise. Lord, may, it, may we not focus on what we see, what we hear of the evil, but may we walk in the conquering spirit of God and overcoming evil with good, as your scripture says, overcoming evil with good, walking in the fullness of you, bringing glory and honor to you. Lord, not so much by what we say, but the life we live, the peace and the settledness of your spirit, God. May it be in each and every one of us and produce in us a life that is worthy of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. As the band begins to play all over this place, if you need prayer, come on. If you've never made Jesus your Savior, Come on, I want to pray with you. Allow the Spirit of God to be your strength today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah.